This is question 5 of the P1.4 end of topic test. On screen now is a mark scheme for this question, so please mark your work. If you get the question correct, I suggest you move on. If you get parts of the question incorrect, I suggest you listen to the rest of the recording to find out how to answer the question correctly in the future. You may wish to pause the recording now so you can mark your work. So this is the information for the question. So question five, it says the following information is needed for the question below. And it gives you lots and lots of information, that some of which is useful and some which is possibly not that useful for answering the question. So if you just scan through it, Antarctica is a huge landmass surrounding the Earth's south pole. It's covered in a th very thick layer of ice and is the only remaining large area of the Earth's surface that has not been affected very much by humans. There are, however, teams of scientists from various countries studying Antarctica. These scientists need electricity for the lighting, for their computers and other scientific instruments and to communicate via satellite with the rest of the world. The temperature in Antarctica is always sub-zero so scientists need some way of keeping their buildings warm. They also need fuel to get about in their snowmobiles. What we want to do now is just quickly get some of the key information and highlight it from there. So looking at that one, I'll go in red. Uh, so they need electricity for lighting, scientific instruments, communication with the rest of the world, and the idea that they need it for heat as well. They also need this bit here for, for snowmobiles. The other thing that you need to note is that because it's in Antarctica, um, it's got the opposite seasons to us. So for example, when it's our winter, it's their summer because it's in the southern hemisphere. Um, and when it's um, our winter in the UK, it's going to be their summer in the southern hemisphere and when it's our summer over there winter okay now we've also got a graph here that shows us different parts of the energy that they'll need so it says the average solar energy uh, received you can see along the top and the black box as mean where the solar energy is going to be high so you can see that we have a maximum okay in January uh, and it starts to disappear to a minimum here in May, June and July and then we get a maximum again in December. Okay, and it says solar cells produce electricity in direct proportion to the rate of which solar energy falls on them. The solar energy needed to keep uh, the special design buildings warm is that bit there. So what we can get from that is that the solar energy will not keep the buildings warm um, for the entire of the year. Look at the wind one. At full output, a couple of wind generators can produce all the electricity needs for computer and lighting. To produce enough electricity to heat buildings, dozens of wind generators would be needed. So that's probably quite important for the question later on. Uh, and it says wind speed needed for full output from wind generator is here. You can see that wind peaks in the winter and is a minimum in their summer in Antarctica. Uh, the question then goes on to say that scientists cannot avoid affecting the environment. How they want to affect it as little as possible. And finally, you can see at the bottom, atmospheric pollution is what in one country eventually leads to the whole of the Earth's atmosphere. Um, and the hole that appears each year in the ozone layer above the Antarctic, for example, is mainly caused by pollutants such as CFCs from countries in the northern half of the hemisphere. Or northern half of the Earth. And basically, that's just the intro to the question, which is a lot of reading, but what are the important bits? I've tried to highlight them there on that first page. So now we come to the, the first question. It says, complete the tables to explain one advantage and what is the advantage of using each type of source to meet the scientist's needs. So you can see here, again, this graph is really important. I think the idea what we're looking at is that solar cells produce electricity in the direct portion of the rate at which solar energy falls. You can see with solar that we get enough energy to keep it warm in the summer, but we wouldn't necessarily get enough energy to keep it warm in the winter. And I remember that, that's the line there. Okay, with wind, what we get from that one is we get enough energy in their winter to generate um, enough to get maximum power from the wind speed. But full output, a couple of wind generators can produce all the electricity for computers and lights, but you need dozens to heat um, the buildings, which is probably not going to be possible. What I'm just going to do now is you drop in the uh, the mark scheme for this question, just so we can have a look at what the mark scheme says. Okay, so there we have it. Okay, 
and in there we're looking for are the reasons why so you can see there that we've got solar cells that provide sufficient um, it's sufficient for heat energy during summer and it's also non-polluted so you can have either one of those to get the mark however the disadvantage is that there's no solar um, power really in the winter or you've got little in the winter energy from wind most available when most needed and it's also non-polluted so you have that one flat one but you need a large number of them and therefore you you can't really justify building so many uh, natural gas could supply all the needs including transport but drilling for gas would be difficult and diesel oil provides all energy needs at all times however it is polluting so those are the answers the examiners were looking for. If you've got different ones, it may be worth checking with your teacher just to see if they'd be accepted. However, you want to write in green pen the correct ones that the, the examiners were looking for. In the um, final part, what you're looking at is it's actually which one energy source would you choose to support most of the energy needed by the scientists and give the reason for your answer. So again in here, I just drop these things in. They need fuel to get around, okay? Uh, and they also need ways of keeping their buildings warm. You can see that solar is not going to do that in winter, and you can also see that the wind's not going to do that in their summer. So you have to choose either gas or diesel. Diesel is probably the best one because you can use that as a fuel for the bikes as well. And the reason for that is it would be diesel uh, because it provides all the energy needed for the whole of the year. And I've just written that in. So diesel provides all energy. Uh, requirements for all of the year and mainly that's the requires the, the needed for fuel as well as heating it for the entire of the year as well. Uh, you could have had gas and that would have counted in the same way so gas and the same common that follows that but you can't have wind or solar because they don't provide all the energy requirements for the entire of the year. That's the end of that question.